You may remember, a couple of weeks back, I was in Spain at the Albatetti racetrack with the d and &E Ducati race team. Well, while I was there, I thought I'd have a look under the covers of one of their full works 748s. Now, it's probably a well-known fact that I'm well into Ducatis, and if you like them, and you like them naked like this, you'll love this one. This is a racing 748. How different is it from yours? Well, for a start off, if you look at these tyres, I doubt if you've got yours like that. I certainly haven't, I'll be honest there. Look at them, well and truly frazzled. But coming up here, one of the biggest differences you've got, the EEPROM, the engine management system, instead of being up on the tail there, it's brought up the front end here. It actually saves weight in that they save the weight of the wiring loom going back, would you believe? But in there, you've got a little EEPROM plugged in there. Instead of the normal way that your dealer would actually plug his servicing gizmos into there and adjust all the ignition timing and the fuel mapping, it's all done from in there with an EEPROM tailored for this particular bike. Mustn't forget, that's got to go in there properly. In fact, I think I'll hold on to it. Looking up there at the clocks, no speedo, of course. Who wants a speedo? You've got temperature and you've got the all-important rev counter. 12,000 revs it's uh, redlined at. Sounds beautiful. Down on the air scoops here, carbon fibre, of course, racing kit from straight from Ducati. You've got your little lugger there, your lap counter comes up above there. Down here, you've got the radiator. But just before I say that, let me say the front forks here, they look like standard showers. They're not. They've been revalved inside and modified to suit each individual rider. But that radiator, that bit's standard Ducati, but this bit is added on at the front for extra cooling. Not double the capacity, but very nearly. Coming along here, fairing panel off, of course, but what you've got here is a belly pan, which is also a catchment area as well. If the engine should let go and explode, the oil has to be caught in there, and that's why it's got that back piece on the back, stop the oil spinning onto the track. One of the neatest things, though, is this. See this? This is a military-style cable connector, so if you get any problems with the electrics, you can quickly change units with no messing, and those connections are dead reliable. They have to be. It's a military kit. Look at all these lovely anodized screws as well. Won't go into the engine internals while we're here, but another big difference, down here, the injector chokes, massive of course, but these are the injectors, single point injectors, right above the throttle butterflies, not going into the side like an ordinary road going Ducati. And of course, the top part, which is under the tank, forms the airbox. Coming back here, and unique, well, unique to all road uh, racing bikes, is the gear change. You haven't got a linkage here because this gear lever actually operates the other way around. This is because when you're cranked over going around a left-hander, you don't want your foot under there to change up. So on this one, when you're changing up it through the gears, you're actually tapping the lever down because otherwise you're going to fetch yourself off, aren't you? Different rear sets, of course, tiny little ones mounted in a different position. Works, shock absorber there, looks similar, but it ain't. Coming back here, you've got the works exhaust system. Look at the size of those exhausts there. Titanium as well, wafer thin. Down here, you can see the rear disc. Looks rather odd, scalloped out there. All for weight saving. You've still got some sweat pad area, but that's all for weight saving. What else have we got around here? You just see down there, the clutch. Got extra weight springs in there to give you maximum grip. And also, all the casing is being cut away for maximum air cooling, because you don't want to end up cooking the clutch at the end of the day. And that's about it. Those are the significant differences. But doesn't it look beautiful? Now, following a Ford Galaxy camera car is not the best way to evaluate a full-on racer, but beggars can't be choosers. First thing to bear in mind is that upside-down gear change. Up for down, down for up. It's so easy to cock it up when you're used to a road bike. I didn't, of course. Well, all right, I did, but only the once. Next is the engine. Factory cams, factory heads, factory airbox, and a full works injector setup at about 20 brake horsepower to a standard 748R, making it feel much more like a 996. Obviously, the bike wasn't set up for me, and at first, the steering setup felt rather odd, ready to tip into a corner before I was. But as the lap progressed, that feeling disappeared. Like a thoroughbred racehorse, you could feel it champing at the bit. 
squeeze open the throttle and those hard-edged power shots were just bursting to escape. But still the camera car stayed ahead. Riding a race bike is a privilege of course that not many of us have, but I was really disappointed that I couldn't have had longer. The 2.1 mile 13 turn circuit was a challenge in itself, but given a day or two I reckon I would have cracked it. I might even have got into sixth gear. Well that was absolutely fantastic. I tell you a race bike is a real experience and I feel very privileged to have a go on one of these. So different, the handling's different, the engine is an absolute stunker. When it comes to changing gear with a slipper clutch, not only do you have to watch the gear change going the other way, but it really feels ragged. But clutchless gear changes are the name of the game. Changing up fine, changing down, I did a few. But quite an experience, but I really didn't do it justice.